Day 27, kitchen paper textures. So let's go into the kitchen, have a good rummage around and see what we can find to create for our collage. We're definitely using paper towels, some cling wrap, some aluminium foil. We're going to take some prints on the gel plate and we're going to use these textures in our collage. Such simple items, simple techniques, but they really create fabulous results. Can't wait to show you. Right, so today we're going to be using kitchen paper. I have some paper towel, which is really nice and it's got a lovely texture on it. So we're going to be printing with that. I also have some cling wrap or glad wrap, depending on where you are and what you call it. It's the plastic stuff we wrap around our food to keep it fresh when it's in the fridge. Also, I have some aluminium foil or our foil. So we're going to experiment with these three kitchen papers today. I'm going to start with the gel plate. As you know, I'm completely obsessed with jelly printing. <laughs> and I find that the more I use the gel plate, the more obsessed I'm becoming. Of course, you don't have to do these techniques on a gel plate. You can just use the cling wrap or the alfoil or anything else straight onto paper or onto canvas or onto any other mixed media surface. But seeing as, yes, I'm a little obsessed with jelly printing, I'm going to use the gel plate and pull some prints. Now, this whole class has been a big continuous lesson of experimenting to create textures for our collage. So it's not going to make any difference today that's what we're going to be doing so make sure you have a play try different ideas have a bit of experiment and see what you like and you might find a technique that really inspires you with your creativity I find what I love about this class is there's so many different options there's so many ways to take the different lessons you can head off in different directions with the same techniques and come up with completely different results. And that really is a whole lot of fun. Right, so cling wrap down. What happens if we just push it on like that to start with? I used some Quin Magenta because it was on my table. And then if we pull it off, oh man, look at that. Look how cool that texture is. I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes to dry and then I think I'll run over it with something that's going to show off those beautiful textured lines. Right, so I'm going to pull it with some transparent red iron oxide. Those two colours work beautifully and then I just want to see what the textures look like, what the marks are and how different they're going to compare with the other kitchen papers. I'm just pulling it with some wet strength tissue, having a little look, a little experiment, little play and see what we create. Right, let's see how our textures look with such a simple tool. Pretty cheap, pretty simple and the marks look great. Have a look at that. Beautiful textured marks. And because I use transparent paint, when you hold it up like this, you can even see them more. Right, how different does the alfoil look on the plate? So what about the fabulous aluminium foil? Let's get some of that out. Now there is a slight pattern on there that could print maybe Maybe, but I don't know, man. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it was going to print enough to really make me happy and create much of a texture. Oops. So we'll scrunch it up and then carefully unfold it without tearing it too much. And we'll put it on the gel plate and see what kind of texture this makes. Just like that. Don't worry if you tear it, it'll be all right. Oh, that's gonna make a really nice texture. I'm pretty sure about that. Right, there's our texture maker. Let's go with some Van Dyke Brown. I think I need more contrast this time. So 
So I think I'll go with some Van Dyke Brown and then pull it with some Titan Buff. That kind of contrast will be able to show off the texture much more. Right, and just put it straight on the plate. It creates like a texture plate on the plate. Creating texture with all of those marks and grooves. You know you could paint that and put it in your collage quite easily, quite happily, you know. I might even do that. Oh yeah, look at those marks. That's fabulous. Right, well let that dry and then I'm going to pull it with the Titan Buff. Now remember, you do have to wait for the first layer to dry before you put the second layer on. I think there's great potential for these types of textures, especially with the layering techniques that we've been doing through the class. I think it could create quite interesting textures for our prints. With such simple techniques, that's what I love, simple techniques with good results, yay. Right, let's have a look and see what the alfoil does. Could have possibly left it on a bit longer because there is quite a bit of a ghost print there. But not to worry, we'll just add that texture to the next print. Look how nice it is. Oh, I think I actually like the alfoil more than the cling wrap. I know you can see it a lot clearer because of the colors I chose, but have a look at the difference in the lines. That's got more lines in it from the cling wrap. The cling wrap creates more lines and the alfoil creates more kind of shorter, sturdier textured marks. It's quite fascinating and so simple to create such good results. Of course, you can just scrunch this up, put paint on the gel plate and dab it like that. You can also do the same with the alfoil. You don't have to lay it out flat, but I really do like the textures that these two prints created. What about the paper towel? I don't think it's going to be as dramatic as these textures are, but it's got a pretty nice pattern. So I think we should at least give it a try. Now my plate does still have some Titan buff on it. Not to worry, it shouldn't affect the texture too much. <laughs> this is the fun of experimenting, trying different ideas, see what happens. And then yes, you can get a little addictive and you can go a little crazy, but it's a pretty simple addiction. See the pattern on that? On the paper towel, I might go this way with it, like that. And we'll put another one along here. And I just wanted to see if it would leave an imprint. If we give it a slight rub over like that, is it going to leave any kind of imprint? Oh man, might be a little too subtle. <laughs> a bit too subtle for me, I'm thinking. <laughs> Or maybe it was the paint. Perhaps I could have chosen a different paint color than the bronze. You can see it slightly on the plate there. So I used the Titan Buff, though I don't think it's going to be as textured as I like, but it might create a nice subtle mark. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> it does create a subtle mark. And then I'm also pulling up the paint that was already on there. I can see it in some areas. I do think a different paint color might yield a better result. And maybe if you used a full body instead of fluid, all these things really matter when you're experimenting, trying different paints, trying different colors, it might change the outcome, but it is a lot of fun. So you do need to go a little crazy, have a little experiment, create a heap of prints and let's make some collage. But before we do that, I'm going to show you um, how great it looks just putting the acrylic paint and the cling wrap on paper. 
Right, so I've got a piece of printing paper. It's a little thicker, a bit like cardstock. And I'm going to put some of these colors on here and then put some of the cling wrap on and show you how fabulous it does look for creating the texture. Now, depending on what paint you use, how thick it is, it's going to make a difference to how it looks. But it is a bit of fun and we are just having a little experiment. So don't get too stressed out about it. Putting some of these colors on that I was just using to take the prints in a nice painterly application. And I think I'll just add a little of the full body paint because I think the fluid might not produce the results that I really want to see because I want to get that beautiful textured mark that the cling wrap can get so i'm thinking that for this particular experiment we definitely need to put the full body paint on the paper right nice painterly marks now i'm going to give it a little bit of a spray with water just so it moves some of that paint around and creates those textured lines of the cling wrap perhaps a little of the bronze shimmer spray That'll get things moving. I know, I do love to throw everything at it. <laughs> Rather like a mad scientist. So now that we've got a little bit of movement on the paint, let's put, oh man, my roll's just about empty. Let's put the cling wrap on. And I'll have to leave this for quite some time until it dries and it will dry in the texture of all of these fabulous lines and marks and why i put the water on and the spray on is because it makes more movement with the paint so it just makes it look even better because the fluid will go into all of these grooves and crevices and it will dry like this and it will look really, really interesting. But you do have to wait for it to dry. So while it's drying, I'm going to have a frenzy on the gel plate and create some more papers with those glorious marks that the alfoil and the cling wrap make. Yay. Of course, I had an absolutely fabulous time printing. <laughs> So I pulled out one of my brand new Dance Moose stencils. I love these new designs. I've just released them with joggles. They're so much fun. I put the shapes on the gel plate first. Of course, you do have to wait for all of these layers to dry. I then put on some fabulous transparent iron oxide, put on the cling wrap, scrunched it up into that fabulous texture. I absolutely love it. It's so easy and it works so well. Pulled that off, waited for it to dry, <laughs> and then pulled the print. And look how glorious it looks. I absolutely love it. You can see very definitely the shapes and marks of the cling wrap. This is the texture that that particular element creates and I love it. It's a fabulous line. This one worked glorious. Of course, then I had to do another one. Same process, I put my beautiful little dance move stencils straight onto the gel plate, put on some Quinn Violet, one of my favorite colors, and then put the fabulous alfoil scrunched up texture sheet on after that. It looks glorious. I really love the textured marks that it makes. Look how good it looks. <laughs> it looks fabulous. This one, I think I pulled in with the iridescent copper because it looks wonderful. I love it. The textured marks really do work very well and it's so incredibly simple. So then I pulled out my bigger gel plate and one of my Dance Moves masks. I absolutely love these shapes. They're so organic and so much fun. Put the paint on the plate and use the fabulous alfoil, yay, for the texture, putting it on, laying it down on the plate and pulling it up, leaving that fabulous texture. 
Then I put my mask on, rolled over some more paint and pulled the print. It looked absolutely fabulous, but of course now I'm in a printing frenzy and I started to pull out the original papers that I was playing with to add more layers. I really love adding multiple layers with the jelly prints because I just think they get better and better. Now that I have my big plate out and I've got my mask in my hand, I did get a little carried away and pulled out the original prints that are already taken with the cling wrap and with the alfoil and created more shapes on top using the masks and the bigger plate. I love how they look. I love how they turned out. You can still see the original textures and the marks coming through the mask shapes that I've left on the print. They look fabulous. I did all of the first prints that I took, creating this second layer with these beautiful techniques. I even ended up going over the blue one with some bronze, just to add a few more marks to it. I'm really loving the multiple layers. I love the textures and I love that I can see the original patterns underneath. I got a little excited then with the actual outfoil. I mean, look at it. So I painted it. <laughs> I painted this one with the Van Dyke Brown. That was the one I used first of all. That had a little tear. And then I painted this one. I've got gold here and I've got the bronze. And I'm thinking with the collage I could tear or cut or make shapes out of the painted alfoil and put it into the collage really really easy and then I looked at the ones that I printed with and what a fabulous pattern that is yes I could use that but I do really like this one the most this is the last print of the day I used the alfoil on the plate and the color of it and the texture looks fabulous. I just want to use this in my collage. <laughs> I don't see any reason why we can't. And then I wanted to try another print with the paper towel because I think it was the paint that the first one didn't work out so good. So I used my beautiful favorite red violet and look how fabulous this print turned out. Now that's much better. That's how it's supposed to print. <laughs> Have a look at the paper towel. We could use that in collage. Easy peasy collage element using paper towel. You can also separate the papers to make it a bit thinner if you want to, but have a look at the print. Turned out beautiful, red violet, and then I pulled it with the copper. Look at the incredible texture that you can see by just laying the paper towel onto the gel plate. I mean, really, you can't get any easier than that. Kitchen paper towel, so cheap. <laughs> and you can use it for collage paper as well. Bonus, get to print with it, get to stick it in your collage. And it turned out absolutely beautiful. That's how it's supposed to look. Now, depending on what pattern your paper towel has, you might have stripes or squares or lines. You can get paper towel in so many different patterns. So rush off to the kitchen and have a look and see what pattern your paper towel has on it. Love to know, can't wait to see it. Hope you do it. It really is a lot of fun. I think that's a fabulous print and it was so easy. Now I have to show you the last print of the day. Have a look at this. Tell me what did I use? I was having a think about if I had used all of the items from my material list and I remembered I hadn't yet used the peg basket. So I had to pull it out. I put the alfoil on the straight part and pushed it in to get the texture of it, which made like a texture plate on the gel plate. It looked absolutely fabulous. I loved it. I did it with the Van Dyke Brown, looked gorgeous, let it dry. And then I put on the paint and pushed in the sides of the peg basket, creating these incredible, awesome circle marks. The 
doesn't it look good? I was like, <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I think it's the best print of the day. It came out fabulous. And all it is, is a cheap dollar store peg basket used on the gel plate. Don't forget, I added my fabulous alfoil. This is how I got this print on here. There's the brown Van Dyke brown from the first print when it was nice and straight and beautiful and flat. And then I scrunched it up, put the cerulean blue deep on the plate and added this onto it. It turned out better than I expected. And I really love this piece. I'm definitely gonna use some of this in my collage. It turned out fabulous. Look at the print. It's so unique and so different. I love this one. I think this one's my favorite one of the day. I think it turned out way better than I expected. And using such unconventional tools and techniques, it really is so much fun. Now I've got all of these beautiful collage papers. I better pull out the art journal and make some choices about which ones I'm going to use. Oh, hang on, I forgot to show you this. This has been sitting here. I think it's been now two days. It's been sitting with the cling wrap on it, creating this fabulous texture. Now, the only problem with putting this on paper is that it can tear. Uh, the longer you leave it, the better it is because it's less likely to tear if it's dry. It'll come off easier, like jelly printing, right? <laughs> It is still wet, but I'm busting to have a look and I want to show you how fabulous the cling wrap looks if you just put the paint down. Oh, look, that's so funny. That's where the end of my roll is. <laughs> and it's left a round circle print. That's just funny. Put the paint down. You can put on some ink or some spray, add some water to move the paint around because then the paint gets into all of those crevices and textures and it creates all the beautiful marks. It's absolutely glorious. No, it's not too bad, it isn't stuck to my cutting board, so that's good. There it is, look at that, absolutely beautiful. You can see the elements of paint and all of those texture marks from the fabulous cling wrap. How easy is that? That's what I particularly love about these techniques using the kitchen paper textures is that it's easy, it's affordable. These tools are literally in your kitchen. <laughs> so you can put the cling wrap onto anything. You can put it onto, well, this is just a piece of paper. You can put it onto a canvas or a canvas board or a cradle board or anything. Put the paint down, maybe have a little spray with some inks or some sprays or some water to get that movement going on so it creates all of those beautiful textures and crevices. Leave it to dry and then there you are, you have an incredibly beautiful textured abstract painting all ready to go. Okay, I'm pulling out the art journal. Let's get a collage happening. Which ones am I going to use? I'm definitely using that one. So what am I gonna put with it? 